Hi, I'm Penny and this is Fraser and this is our Level 2 Atomic Structure and Bonding Strategy video. This standard has a few key parts to it. There's entropy changes, Lewis structures, shapes and polarity, as well as different types of solid. These concepts are relegated to their own questions usually, so usually you're looking at about three questions per year. There's almost definitely going to be an enthalpy change question on your exam this year. They are almost always excellence questions, so they're a good way to boost your grade. You'll get a table like this, and you have to, what you have to do is you have to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction. So what you do is you calculate the enthalpy change on one side of the reaction, and you subtract it from the other. So it's reactants minus products. Bonds broken minus bonds formed. One thing that people tend to struggle with is picking the type of solid that you are given in a question. So it's really, really important to practice this. For example, you have to pick from ionic solids, molecular solids, and metallic solids. So one way to think about it is where things are in the periodic table. So if you see something that's made up of elements entirely from the right-hand side of the periodic table, it's probably a molecular solid. You will be familiar from level 1 acids and bases with your table of ions. So if you see something with, uh, made up of two separate ions, like a positive ion and a negative ion, that's definitely an ionic solid. If it's from really anywhere else on the periodic table and it's just a single element, it's probably a metal. Definitely practice this a bunch because it's really, really important in your exam. Obviously the fourth type of solid you need to talk about is your giant covalent networks. These are graphite, diamond and silicon dioxide. So when explaining properties of compounds, it's important to explain the property, the compound, and how they relate together. For example, if we were to explain why a solid ionic compound is not conductive, we would first have to explain what an ionic compound is. An ionic compound is a strong lattice held of positive and negative ions held together by strong electrostatic forces. Conductivity is where electricity can flow through a compound due to free moving charged particles. Therefore, an ionic compound is not conductive because they, they're charged particles are not free moving. Another question that is guaranteed to come up is Lewis structures. So here's a quick little method that is probably different to the way you were taught. So the way I like to think about it is thinking about the number of bonds that each element likes to form. So we can get that from the number of valence electrons and the number of valence electrons that's missing because we all know that most atoms like to form, uh, like to have eight electrons in their outer shell. So if we look at a molecule like CO2, for example, right? So carbon has four valence electrons. It's missing four valence electrons, which means it will form four bonds. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It's missing two valence electrons, so it will like to form two bonds. So if we put everything together, we have a carbon that likes to form four bonds and two oxygens that each like to form two bonds. Well, from there, it's pretty easy to see that the carbon's going to be in the middle because it needs to form the most bonds, and each oxygen is going to be doubly bonded to that central carbon so that everything is satisfied. One thing to remember with Lewis structures is to always draw your lone pairs on the Lewis structures or else you will not be marked correct. There are a few exceptions to that rule, by the way. Um, beryllium only forms two bonds and boron forms three bonds. This exam is a pretty predictable one because pretty much everything is guaranteed to show up each year. Therefore, past exams are going to be a really, really good resource for you this year. While we've covered a lot of strategies today, we haven't covered everything. So it's important for you guys to also check out the study time walkthrough guides to make sure that you ace this exam. Thanks for watching and good luck for your exam.